Be with us this day, Jesus. Help us to hear your will for us. And let us follow your voice. Follow your leading. Let us have you be our guide. Amen. Amen. Today I want to look again at the words of Jeremiah that you just heard. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wound of my people? Those words were said by Jeremiah in the midst of the loss of the Jews of the temple in Jerusalem when they were living in exile in Babylon. When I first read the words, there is no balm in Gilead, the first thing that came to mind is that wonderful hymn that we just sang, there is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Well, I believe that this song could be the theme song for St. Luke's. Our roots are really deep here in the ministry of healing, deeper than a lot of people realize. People from the early service said, I never knew that. Sarah Jones, the lady that started St. Luke's back in 1893, was originally a Civil War nurse. She then went to medical school, became a doctor, married a ship captain. The ship captain came out here, so she came with him. They lived down in Dungeness, and she said, I want a church. So she gathered up every Episcopalian she could find in that area in 1893, and they started a church, and they called it St. Luke's. Now, with her background as being both a nurse and a doctor, choosing St. Luke, who is, the rest of his name is St. Luke, the physician. It's all about healing, and so it makes so much sense of how St. Luke's has evolved that our roots are very deep in that healing ministry. So since our founding 120 years ago this year, in one way or another, St. Luke's has been about offering balms, B-A-L-M. What a great word. My grandmother had some of it hanging around. She didn't put on any hurt or cut that I had. So it's basically, according to the dictionary, a fragrant ointment or preparation used to heal or soothe the skin. But more important for us to know, the secondary meaning is, it is something that is comforting, soothing, or having a restorative effect. That's St. Luke's. Comforting, soothing, and having a restorative effect. As I like to say, it's part of the DNA of who St. Luke's is. And you continue to live that out unconsciously sometimes, as part of who we are as a community. It's hard to even count the ways that St. Luke's offers these balms. One example would be our 1,000 plus healing quilts that have been blessed and sent to wrap people in prayer. One of them might be the 27 12 step groups that meet all over our building during the week and month. The meals we offer out of the kitchen at light lunch every Saturday morning, giving the hungry not only food, but comfort and honor in their personhood. There is a balm at St. Luke's. Our monthly healing service offers those attending the love and comfort of Jesus, presence through the many hands laid upon them. The donations every month that we get for the Swim Food Bank Every box, sack, can, whatever people bring forward is given to people who do not have enough food, who can't go to Costco, who can't go to Safeway. They don't have the money for that. That food they receive there is a balm. The stuffed animals we gathered here in August, remember the NOAA project? We gathered all those stuffed animals. They were taken over to Discovery Memory Care. Animals were handed out to the people there. And the most telling thing was one man who was holding a little stuffed 
tiger and he said, can I keep it? There is a bomb at St. Luke's. The money we donated to the Heifer Project is going to comfort and have a restorative effect on those who receive animals that will give them freedom from hunger. And the mosquito nets that we donated, they are keeping 12 families from being stung by mos mosquitoes and catching malaria. Out there in the hall, our clothes have erupted and fallen off onto the floor, which is what we wanted to do. The, the clothes that were gathered for the homeless vets in Fallon County to be taken to the stand down on October 3rd. Each pair of jeans, each pair of socks says, there's someone who cares for you. Next Sunday, our noisy can donation is going to go to one of the local clinics that offer health care to people who can't afford it. There is a bomb at St. Luke's to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb at St. Luke's to heal the sin sick soul. And then it's our time every Sunday for healing prayers. I don't know if you realize it, it's part of my job in Colorado. I went to like uh, 60, 70 churches in the diocese for various reasons. And almost never were the healing prayers offered. And sometimes there were healing prayers offered, but they were in the chapel or off in the corner because they didn't want to disturb the worship with healing prayers. And the fact that ours is an intrinsic part, part of the fabric of this service, uh, the services that we do here, is, is the most wonderful thing that to offer a place, of need, uh, place for those in need of being surrounded by Jesus' love and comfort. We offer prayers for healing during the service as part of that service. We offer comfort, restoration, and the love of Jesus, tangible here. Indeed, St. Luke's is an incredible place. I hear from parishioners who hear my word at this dismissal to take Jesus out this door, and they do that. They offer that balm of love and compassion, taking someone to the ER and sitting with them all night, and then taking them back home at 4 in the morning driving someone to a doctor's appointment in Seattle, bringing food to someone who's too tired to cook, running errands for the disabled, delivering flowers, sending cards, shopping for the shut-in. I don't have time to list all the ways that this church community is a bomb, but one of the most recent and visible was our Santa Maria barbecue. The folks who came to our regular light lunch were invited to stay to the barbecue as our guests and share with our community. That invitation was life-changing for these men and women. Listen to the words from one guest. Greetings, St. Luke's Church. My name is Azella. I attended the light lunch every Saturday. August 24, 2013, you had a church barbecue and invited the light lunch crowd. I thought it would be hamburgers or hot dogs or even chicken. But what a treat. It was prime rib. It was wonderful. I could even cut it with a table knife. I know that not many like me who go to light lunch, I know that many like me who go to light lunch could not afford that quality and cut of beef. Your church truly serves God. And God blessed Squim with your presence. I, on behalf of others, thank you for your caring love. Love and light, Azila. The barbecue was not only a place of comfort and restoration for the guests like Azela, but it was a place of growth and renewal for us. For some, it was a place of discomfort and disease as we pushed old boundaries of comfort and ease. Now it's time for St. Luke's to examine more deeply how, who we are and how we can become church outside these walls in a new way, or in new ways. Thinking about Azela, Azela and that barbecue brought this writing to mind that I saw online a few weeks ago. I don't have an author for it. Be gentle with yourself, 
for you are living through a major expansion of your faith and how you use it in the world. You are rewiring decades of old beliefs and shifting how you live your life. This is no small feat. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. Great change often brings with it discomfort and second guessing one's self. Do not shrink from this mission. Not now. You are changing and your divine self is shining the way. Now I'd like you to join me singing. There is a bomb in Gilead, but it's not a bomb in Gilead, it's a bomb at 